I think my boyfriend is trying to push our relationship off onto his friend. As the title suggests I believe that my, 24F, boyfriend, 26M, is trying to actively move me to date his best friend? I've been dating my boyfriend, we'll call him Michael, for about a year now. We've known each other for years previous because we've always been in the same friends group since high school. His best friend, we'll call him John, has also been someone I've known for a long time because he's also in the group. John had asked me out years ago but I turned him down because he's always been somewhat of a cocky guy who could never see he was ever wrong. Many people find him charming but I think smarmy is a better word. He seemed offended but brushed it off and even told people that I had asked him out and he rejected me which was fine because it didn't affect my life at all. After a few months all was forgotten and we just pretended the other one didn't exist and that's how it's been for years. Until Michael asked me out randomly and I decided to give it a shot. It turned out we had a lot of similar hobbies and really had a good time so we started dating shortly after that. Now about 6 months ago Michael started to act strange but in really subtle ways. I would talk about how much I loved animals and he would interject that John just loved animals. Which wouldn't be weird but he did it with everything I talked about with even the slightest bit of enthusiasm. If I loved it, John loved it just as much. He told me how compatible me and John were and how he wished we meshed more. I eventually told Michael the first really didn't care what John liked because he was kind of pretentious and we never got along. He seemed really offended but quickly recovered and by the next day everything was good again. About a week after that instance Michael would talk up John randomly and with seemingly no reason. Hey I talked to Brittany yesterday and man, John is apparently a god in bed ha ha. Maybe I should ask the guy for tips? John is volunteering at that shelter we went to a couple weeks ago, what a guy. We should have John make us dinner, he's a great cook. It was every day to every other day I had to hear about John's greatness and it was to the point I initially thought that Michael wanted to date John. Then three weeks ago after we had some drinks he asked me, if we ever broke up would you date someone else in the group? I had no idea what to say because it was so random but he quickly filled the void by saying, I think I would if I were you and John was single. Seriously? So three days ago I confronted him in the kitchen and told him that if he had anything he wanted to tell me I would listen to it no matter what and that I would always be there for him. He seemed confused and told me he had no idea what I meant by that. So I brought up all the times he talked about John and how he would date him and told him that if he really wanted to date John the first understood and would support them, after all they're best friends so they obviously have a good connection. When I say he blew up I cannot stress how angry he got. He used a dozen slurs for gay people and said he was disgusted I saw him like that and that he would never do something like that. We ended up getting in a huge fight over it because I certainly don't support his language or attitude toward LGBTQ folks and that it was just a vibe I got from him and I didn't mean to mislabel him. We haven't really talked but he's staying at his parents house right now and today John called me to tell me he doesn't support Michael's attitude toward me? And invited me over to talk about it, even saying that Michael was 100% okay with it? Am I crazy? Am I making up some convoluted story in my head or is this bizarre? TLDR my boyfriend hypes up his best friend to me and talks about how compatible we are and I'm worried he's trying to push me toward a relationship with him. Relevant comments. Throw away me Nate. So it sounds like maybe they want a threesome. Or Michael is attracted to John in some way. Or here's the kicker maybe Michael cheated on you and he thinks that if you hit it off with John and have sex he wouldn't feel guilty about it. Maybe he's like trying to push a free pass on you without coming out and saying he cheated. Or they are swingers. Oop replied. Oh my god all these theories are living in my head rent free right now and I can't get straight answers from anyone. This is going to keep me up tonight I can already tell. Smoked 69. You should ask him why he is trying to set you up with John. You should also break up with Michael. Oop replied. I just didn't want to come out and say that because it's so presumptuous I guess. I have no proof, just that gut feeling that something is wrong. I'm trying to think through my options. Because this is our first real fight, but once again it's always about John. Edit. So, I called Michael when he got off work and the first thing he asked me was if I went to vent to John. Naturally, I didn't because we're not close and told him as much. He didn't have much to say to that so I started on my questions that you guys suggested, why are you pushing me toward John? Do you want to break up? Etc. He got once again defensive and said he refused to talk about it over the phone and suggested we meet at John's place to talk it out. I asked why John had to be included at all since it is really between the two of us and he basically told me that it's really between the three of us? I refused meeting at John's for obvious reasons and told him if it had to be the three of us we could meet at a restaurant. He seemed fine with that and we scheduled meeting at a bar slash grill that's pretty close to all of us. I showed up early and got us a table that had some privacy and not long after John walks through the door. 
he sat down immediately and started chatting about how we were both so timely and that he liked when women showed up early because it showed they had good time management skills. 25 minutes after Michael was supposed to show up he texts me and says he had car problems and couldn't make it but to get to know John since I was already there. I'm just beyond livid at this point. John keeps trying to buy me drinks and even tries to schedule another time to hang out. I confronted him about Michael pushing me toward him and he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about. I kept mentioning how Michael was talking about him to me and John just said that it made sense because brothers have brothers' backs. I told him the brothers can have each other and left fuming. Michael's tried calling me three times John's tried seven. I want to cut them both off and say good riddance but to do that would be leaving the friend group as well and I don't really have that many friends to begin with and it makes me so mad that I even have to make this decision. Anyway. That's the update sorry if it doesn't resolve anything. It makes me angry too. Update. I went to Michael's house pretty early this morning since I have work today and really needed this resolved. I had been up all night going back through the comments and trying to piece everything together and honestly it was driving me crazy. Michael was alone when I got there which was a relief because I pictured John showing up like a movie villain. He initially didn't want to let me in which was really weird but I told him I wasn't going to leave without talking to him about this. So he finally let me come in. We sat down to talk. I asked him about the last night which he said he had car trouble but it was all fixed now. Convenient. I asked him a few more questions but was met with vague answers so I decided to just cut to the chase and said, why do you want me to like John? Do you want me to date him? Do you want to have a threesome what is it? Once again instead of answering he just watched me from his stupid chair and then had the nerve to ask me who I told my suspicions to? So I said I'd been running them through my head but that my mom knew I was coming over to talk, she didn't but he was starting to be really creepy. He got mad and said it wasn't like that and I was making him out to be the bad guy because they were, yes, they, looking for something long term not just a one time thing. And now that all my suspicions were 100% confirmed I told him you can't make plans including someone else without their consent and that I would never be interested in anything with the two of them and that I was no longer interested in anything with just him either. I started leaving and told him to never contact me again same goes for John and he could share the message when he blocked my way out and said I had to hear him out in his side of the story. I told him I didn't want to nor care to and that he needed to let me leave because my mom was expecting me in the next half hour. He started getting frantic saying if he could just get John over there to explain it would all make sense. So I ran out the back door and used the garden exit to get to my car and locked the doors immediately. He came outside and started pounding on my window saying I was making a huge mistake and that I'd regret this. I was bawling in my car when I backed it up to drive away I'm pretty sure I drove over their mailbox by accident because the back of my car has a huge dent. My car was basically out of gas so I had to stop even though all I wanted to do was put as much space between us as possible. Which is when I saw the dent, right when I was about to leave who else would call my name but his mom. She was on her way home from the grocery store and was worried because I looked like hell warmed over. I told her about everything that just happened and got more than a few stares from other people but fuck it I guess I'm just the crazy lady at Maverick. His mom looked horrified for me and told me to stay as far away from him as possible. She told me to come sit with her in her car where she proceeded to ask me when I met Michael which was high school. She figured as much and said that in middle school him and John raped a girl together and have a sealed record because they were minors and didn't mean to do it. She told me how sorry she was because she said it happened so long ago she thought he changed. She put him in therapy and thought he was better. She said if she had any idea there might have been a chance of this happening she would have told me immediately. I just gave her a quick bye and I'm so fucking scared of everything right now. I'm going to my mom since they both know where I live. I sent a mass text out to everyone in the group detailing everything and so far three people have said they support me so that's good I guess. What do I even do? I'm never talking to them again, I've already blocked them both on everything I could think of but I've been getting hidden number calls since. I'm considering going into the police station to file a harassment complaint so that it's at least documented. My mom said she's going to call my uncle who works at the court and see what the next best step is. Thank you guys so much. I don't know if I would have confronted Michael without you guys confirming how weird this was. I'm terrified but glad that I at least know what's going on now. My mom's here as my support right now and some of the girls are coming over later tonight just to make sure I'm okay. I'm sorry if this only makes some sense the adrenaline still hasn't left me and my hands are unsteady. I appreciate every single one of you who took time to help me out because I think I got out just in time honestly. Honestly. Thank you guys. Relevant Comments Tequila, Mockingbird 80 this was the first post I ever saved on Reddit to check later because I was so worried about you, I'm glad you're safe but good god you dodged a hail of bullets there. I can't imagine how you must be feeling but just know there is a stranger out here thinking of you and sending you all the positive vibes. Oh and as for his mom, 
I have no words for her that are allowed on here, if your kid is messed up enough to rape someone in middle school, there's no fixing them, not ever, and she knows it, that's just magical thinking slash delusional, and that thinking put you in an incredible amount of danger, especially as she had allowed him and John to remain friends? Oop replied. Thank you. Seriously though. She didn't find it worth telling me when they were still friends? Or when I told her how much Michael talking about John annoyed me weeks previous. I have a hard time feeling anything but resentment toward her tbh. Lackey 98. Do you think this could have been the plan all along? John tries to get with you, when you say no, he told Mike to get with you and that works. After a while John tells Mike to start hyping him up. Telling you how great he is to see if you interested. They seem to have a toxic brothers for life friendship, where they share everything. Even girls and don't really care if the girl wants it or not as long as it's what they want. You said in an early post Michael was the more dominant one in their friendship. I don't believe that's the case. I don't think he does anything without John's say so. When Mike was getting frantic, trying to explain, saying it will all make sense when John gets here. I imagine he thinks John can fix anything once John say everything fine it is. I imagine it's been like this since middle school. Go to the police. Tell them what they did to you, what they did in middle school. If you have any text messages, voicemail any evidence at all that this was what they were planning you need to give it to the police. They've done it once. They tried with you. If you stay silent, they will do it again. Oop replied. I'm going in about an hour with my mom and my friend Brittany. I have screenshots of the 70 plus phone calls from unknown numbers and Brittany is kind of my witness to them trying to find me. I'd really what to do or say I just really hope the police listen to what I've got to say because I wouldn't know what to do if they just dismiss it. Last update. I'm so sorry it took me so long to update. Life has been crazy and between everything and the state shutting down again I've been a mess. I went and talked to the police about getting a restraining order but the officer I talked to said it fell into domestic violence and had me file a DVOP, domestic violence orders of protection, and we have an unset court date to take it before a judge. I'm nervous as hell about it but at least something is going to happen. With Michael anyway, because I didn't have a relationship with John and he never technically harassed me there's not much I could do with him. I'm still getting a ton of blocked calls but I'm in the process of changing my number so that should resolve itself soon enough. I'm back in my apartment though we've added some new safety features, cameras and new locks, and currently it's a waiting game. I have to see Michael in court at some point to tell my story, and John's gone MIA. When the police went to talk to him he wasn't home and hasn't been as far as anyone I talked to knows. I get weird letters left at my door but they've all been delivered by the post office so not much I can do about that. It's mostly rambling about love which gives me the creeps I've stopped opening them at this point and keep them in the drawer for when I go to court. I have an interview for a new job so wish me luck. My boss has let Michael in twice since I've been back and I don't feel safe there anymore. My friends are split 80-20 now. Minority thankfully is with Michael and John but now I know who I can't trust. Anyone who listened to what I had to say and still think I'm being irrational because I led John on is an ah no way about it. So good riddance. Unfortunately my mom wasn't left alone and someone broke her front window so the police also had to show up for that one. It's been quiet for two days now and I'm not sure whether to be relieved or nervous. Does looking over your shoulder ever go away? I hope so. This feels more like a diary now than a post. I'm okay though and my life is getting there so once again, thanks to everyone who helped or messaged me.